Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Hello. Most High Christ Bless. This is 15 Minutes with the Captains. My name is Captain Joel, and this is Officer Judge Real. What are we going over today? Colossians 2, verse 16. Many Christians ignorantly use Colossians 2, 16 as a license to sin. No, you cannot take Paul's letters and as a license to break God's laws. Get me Sirach chapter 15, verse 20. The book of Sirach chapter 15, verse 20. He have commanded no man to do wickedly. So God has commanded no man to do wickedly. Just like the Christians in a Christian church use Paul's letters to break God's laws. Use Paul's letters to justify your sin. But God, the creator of heaven and earth, commanded neither Paul, neither any followers of the gospel to do what? He have commanded no man to do wickedly. He has commanded no man to do wickedly. Read. Neither have he given any man license to sin. Neither has he given any man, especially the apostle Paul, a license to sin. But what do we do in a Christian churches today? We use all the letters of Paul to say, we don't have to keep God's laws anymore. We don't have to keep his laws. We can do whatever we want in Christ. We are saved under grace. But let's go to Colossians 2.16. Let's get further understanding the true meaning of the scripture. The book of Colossians. Chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat. What do they say? Let no man judge you, brother. You cannot judge me for the meats that I eat. I can eat shrimp. I can eat crab. I can eat pork. I can eat lobster. I can eat clam. I can eat chitlin, brother. Some down south Christians say I can eat possums. I eat turtle soup. I eat catfish. Let no man judge you in meat. Read. Or in drink. Or in drink, brother. I can get drunk all I want to. Let no man judge me in me. Drink. Read. Or in respect of an holy day. Brother, don't even judge me when it comes to holy days. I can celebrate Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Easter, birthdays. That's what they use this verse to justify their sin. Read. Or of the new moon. Or the new moon, brother. You telling me to keep the new moon, but the Bible says don't judge me. Don't, I don't have to keep the new moon. Read. Or of the Sabbath days. I don't have to keep the Sabbath day. Every day is the Sabbath day, my brother. Sunday, in fact, Sunday is the new Sabbath day, they say. Read. Which are a shadow of things to come. But you don't understand what that scripture means. So what's Paul saying that don't judge you in terms of the high holy days you keep? Don't judge you in terms of the food you eat, the drinks you drink. Or when the Israelites come out and correct you in a proper understanding of what high holy days to keep, you say, don't judge me, brother. Let's see, did Paul truly mean that? Let's go up a couple of verses in verse 8. Colossians 2, verse 8. Because this is the question I need to ask each and every one of you listening to the sound of our voices. Read. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Beware, lest any man spoil you. The Bible says, Paul the apostle says, beware, be warned, be alert, lest any man spoil you. What? Through philosophy. Through philosophy, read. And vain deceit. And vain deceit, me lies, read. After the tradition of men. So if any man on this earth comes with a doctrine contrary to the gospel of Christ, and that's a tradition of man, read. After the rudiments of the world. And these traditions of man come from the world are not biblically, are not biblical, read. And not after Christ. And not after Christ. Meaning these traditions are not biblically founded and after Christ, read. For in him, 
dwelleth all the fullness. So that's it. So you got to ask yourself a question. What high holy days, what holidays are of God? Which high holidays can you find in the Bible? And which holidays can you not find in the Bible? So Paul says, beware, be alert, be warned. Let's any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men. Now, the question is, is Christmas, is that a tradition of man or is that ordained holiday of God? Hmm. Where in the Bible do we find Christmas? That Christ told us to celebrate his birth, that the apostles after the death of Christ celebrate his birth. Oh, what tradition? Where do we find New Year's? Where did Apostle Paul or any of the apostles tell us or Christ tell us to celebrate New Year's? Where's that in the Bible? What about birthdays? Where is that in the Bible? Is that a tradition of man or is that a tradition of God? What about Mother's Day? What about Father's Day? What about your 4th of July? Your Thanksgiving? Your Easter? Where can you find any of these in the Bible? If you cannot buy, find these in the Bible, the question you have to ask yourself, are these man-made traditions, or are these ordained high holy days of God? Hmm. Paul is not contradicting himself, which you'll find out. So in verse Colossians 2, verse 8, he says, Beware lest any man spoil you after the traditions of man. And in Colossians 2, verse 16, he says, Let no man judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day. So is, there, is Paul contradicting himself? He says, not to follow the man-made traditions, but on top of that, he's telling you not to judge, be judged after the high, um, for not keeping God's high holy days. There's confusion in your understanding. Let's go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. Let's see what Christ said. The book of Matthew chapter 15, verse 4. Uh, let's start at verse 2. Verse 2. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Mm -hmm. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said unto them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God? Why do you also break God's commandments, Read By your tradition. By your traditions. So by you celebrating your Christmas, your, your 4th of July, your Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Things, all these man-made traditions, you're breaking the laws of God. If it's not found in a Bible, it's not ordained of God. Read on. Is that it? Yes, sir. All right. Let's go now. Let's see. What holidays, high holy days, did God command us to keep? Where can you find these things in the Bible? Now, were the, was Christ keeping them? Were the disciples keeping them? So why would Paul say not to keep them if he was keeping them? Let's find out in the Bible. Let's go to John chapter 7, verse 1. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 1. Mm -hmm. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jerusalem, because the Jews sought to kill him. Mm -hmm. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. So Christ went to the Eventually, you're going to find out later in the verse. Christ went to the Jews' feast of tabernacle. Why? Because that was ordained of God. Christ kept tabernacles. Let's go to Hanukkah. The book of John, chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, mm -hmm. and it was winter. Mm -hmm. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Hmm. Christ kept the feast of dedication, which you call Hanukkah. Let's go to Matthew 26, verse 17. Book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 17. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? So they asked Christ, Where wilt thou that we prepare for you, Christ, to keep the Passover? Read. And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, the master said, my time is at hand. Mm -hmm. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Christ says, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Christ kept the Passover. Christ, you don't hear anywhere in the Bible Christ keeping Easter. Well, they say Easter's after Christ. You don't hear any in the Bible, anywhere in the Bible, Christ keeping Mother's Day, Father's Day, Thanksgiving. None of these man-made traditions. All these traditions, which you're going to find out, are all ancient pagan customs. 
has nothing to do with God, nor with the Bible, nor with the gospel of Christ. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. Let's get some other high holy days or feast days that the disciples in Christ kept. Book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, mm -hmm. they were all with one accord in one place. So when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord and one in place. Why? Because they kept the feast of Pentecost as it is commanded in the Levitical law. Now let's go to another one. Let's go to Acts chapter 27 verse 9. Book of Acts chapter 27 verse 9. Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. So it says, the fast was now already passed. Now, do you see a little number right next to what says fast? Yes, sir. Read it. Uh, four. The fast was on the 10th day of the seventh month. Hmm. What scripture does it quote? Leviticus chapter 23, verse 27 and 29. What fast, what particular fast did God command us on the 10th day on the seventh month? The day of atonement. Paul kept the day of atonement. Wait a minute. This was after Christ died. So if Christ, Paul, through the book of Colossians, saying, let no man judge you. Why is Paul keeping the day of atonement? Why are the disciples, after the death of Christ, keeping Pentecost? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 5, verse 7. And why would Paul say, let no man judge you? Hmm. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us keep what feast? The Passover. Let us keep the feast of unleavened bread. The feast of Passover. Paul kept the Passover. So once again, why would Paul contradict himself Say, let no man judge you for a feast day, but he himself is keeping the Passover. He himself kept Day of Atonement. Christ kept Tabernacles, Hanukkah, Passover. There's a contradiction in your understanding. That's what it all comes down to. Now, let's get the true understanding of Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. The book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. Now let's read it again. Let no man therefore judge you in meat <coughs> or in drink or in respect of an holy day. So now why was Paul bringing? You have to understand the history. What was going on during those times? Why was Paul said, let no man judge you in meat or in drink or respect of holy day? What were they doing on these specific holy days? What were they doing during the new moons? What were they doing on the Sabbaths prior to Christ's sacrifice? Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 47, 45, verse 17. Book of Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 17. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offering. Prior to Christ's sacrifice, prior to Christ's death, it was the priest's part to give burnt offerings on the new moons, the Sabbath days, the holy feast days. Read. And meat offering. And meat offering. That's why I said, let no man judge you in meat. Not meat in terms of I can eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, clam, chitlins. No, it's talking about meat offerings. Some people were still offering meat offerings on high holy days, on Sabbath days, on new moons. Read. And drink offerings. Or drink offerings. We gave drink offerings, offerings on these high holy days. Read. And the feast. And the feast days, whether it be tabernacles, Pentecost, the new moons, whether it be any feast days, we have to give a drink offering, a meat offering. Read. And in the new moons. And the new moons, you have to give a meat offering, a drink offering. Read. And in the Sabbath. And the Sabbath days, you have to give an offering. Read. And all solemnities of the house of Israel. And all solemnities, all high holy days in the house of Israel. Let's get Numbers 28, verse 9 now. You have to know the Old Testament first in order to understand the New Testament. 
Numbers chapter 28, verse 9. The book of Numbers, chapter 28, verse 9. And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two tenth dills of flour for a meat offering. You see, on the Sabbath days, you had to give a meat offering under the Levitical covenant of animal sacrifice. Let's jump to verse 11 now. Verse 11. And in the beginnings of your months, ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks, and one ram. So on the new moons, the beginning of your months is the new moon. You have to give burnt offerings. Let's go down to verse 16. Verse 16. And in the 14th day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in the 15th day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. And the first day shall be in holy convocation. Ye shall do a, no manner of servile work therein. But ye shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Two young bullocks and one ram. So during the Passover, you had to offer a sacrifice by burnt offerings unto the Lord. So what do we find out? That in Colossians 2 verse 16, it's not actually going to not keeping the high holy days. People judging you and telling you to keep the high holy days. And you say, no, I don't have to keep it. No. What was happening during the time, the history of the disciples? Let's go to Acts chapter 15. Book of Acts chapter 15 verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. So what are they saying? Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. What was the manner of Moses? After you get circumcised, you have to give a sacrifice, an animal sacrifice. So you have certain sects of the Pharisees saying that, except you get circumcised after the manner of Moses, mean you offer up a sacrifice because they were still practicing and pushing animal sacrifice. They say you cannot be saved. They were judging them, saying that if you don't keep these high holy days, these feast days with a meat offering, with a drink offering on a Sabbath days, you cannot be saved. That was the whole judging thing. It wasn't judging and based upon us keeping you telling us telling you not to keep us telling you to keep these days. And you say we don't have to keep these days. They were judging them based upon saying that you cannot be saved if you don't sacrifice on these high holy days. When we just found out that not so under Christ. You don't have to give an animal sacrifice anymore. Now go back to Colossians 2, verse 16. Let's read everything that's in its entirety. All right. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 16. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. So what does it mean, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is Christ? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 10, verse 1. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. And For the law having a shadow of good things to come. What was the law they make a reference to? The law of animal sacrifice having a shadow of good things to come. The law of animal sacrifice was the schoolmaster leading up to Christ. The law of animal sacrifice was a shadow leading up to the actual the image of Christ, which will be the body of Christ, the sacrifice of Christ. That's why it says, and the body is of Christ. Read on. And not the very image of the things mm -hmm. can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. You see, with, that cannot with those sacrifices. So the law that had a, was a shadow of things to come was the law of animal sacrifice, which was to be done away with. Jump to verse 4. Verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. It was not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. Because why? Christ took away his sins by dying for us. Read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, mm -hmm. but a body hast thou prepared me. Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. Now go back to Colossians 2 verse 17. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 17. Which are a shadow of things to come, 
but the body is of Christ. The law of sacrifice was temporary for its time period, <coughs> but the body is of Christ. Christ was that final sacrifice. So in Colossians 2 verse 16, when it says, let no man therefore judge you in meat, it's not talking about you can eat whatever foods you want to eat. The judging in meat is talking about meat offerings. They were saying that unless you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, meaning you give an animal sacrifice after you do these things, whether you have a high holy day, whether you have a Sabbath day, a new moon day, you have to sacrifice. But Paul says, no, 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 no. Don't let these men tell you you cannot be saved if you don't give a sacrifice. Read. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Or in respect of an holy day. Don't let no man say you cannot be saved if you don't give a sacrifice on these high holy days. Read. Or of the new moon. Or don't let no man judge you and say you cannot be saved if you don't give a sacrifice on a new moon. Or of the Sabbath days. Don't let no man say you cannot be saved if you don't give a sacrifice, a meat offering, or a drink offering on the Sabbath day. Read. Which are a shadow of things to come. Because the animals, the law of animal sacrifice was a shadow for Christ to come. This is Captain Joel, and this is Officer Jezreel. And this was your 15 minutes with the captains. Shalom, most high Christ bless. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.